let's take a look at how latency and throughput processors differ. So there are two types of processors we're going to talk about today. Those are CPUs, or central processing units. These are the regular processors in a computer. And GPUs, or graphics processing units. These are the processors that typically handle 3D graphics on the screen. Now, we're going to see that these two processor types have different design philosophies and different strengths. And not surprisingly, you're going to see one of them is good for latency and the other is good for throughput. The future, however, is going to be some of both. So in the future, you're going to have both of these things together, and you're going to have to choose which one works best for your software. So guess which one of these is latency focused and which one is throughput focused? Well, the central processing unit, this is the one that's latency focused. So CPUs these days are fast, they run about 3 gigahertz, but they only have a few cores, that is they're not doing a lot of things at once. Whereas GPUs are very different, they're much slower, they're less than a gigahertz, but they have a lot of cores, hundreds of cores on here, so they're doing lots of things at the same time, but each one's more slow. Here we're doing a few things at once, but each one's really fast. Now, why should you care about that? Let's take a look at some numbers here. So here we got two processors. This is an Intel 4-core processor and an AMD Radon GPU. You can see all of these little patterns here. These are all the processors on the GPU. If we look at the statistics for this, you can see this 130 watts in this part, and it gets some pretty good performance, 106 billion floating point operations per second. If we look at the GPU over here, we can see that it's 188 watts, so it's more power, but it does an awful lot more floating point operations per second. 2,700 gigaflops versus 106. And if we go through and we calculate out what their power efficiency is, that is how many gigaflops they're doing for each watt, we can see that the GPU is potentially much, much more power efficient. 14 versus 0.8. And the reason for this is each of these little processors is much simpler and runs much more slowly. So it uses less power to get done what it's doing. If you have a lot of them, you can still get good performance without using too much power, so more efficient. Whereas over here on the CPU, each one of these processor cores needs a huge amount of work to run really fast. So a lot of stuff has to be do done, so it uses a lot more energy to get stuff done quickly. So what you see here is there's a big penalty you pay in terms of, of energy for getting low latency, and you can potentially get much higher throughput more energy efficiently. Now, how do we go about building these CPUs and GPUs? So let's take a look at what's inside a CPU and a GPU. So if we're going to build a CPU today, we're going to take some sort of pipeline in our processor, and we want to make it fast, so we're going to make the pipeline longer so we can run at a high clock frequency, and we're going to add a whole bunch of stuff in here for supporting operating systems and all sorts of things that you'd want to do on a CPU. Now we've got a really fast pipeline, but the problem is every time the pipeline needs to get data, it takes a long time. So what we do is we go put a level 1 cache on the side, which will store recently used data and give it to us quickly. That's fine. Now we're running really quickly, but every time we make a decision in our program, that is we do a branch, we're going to spend a long time waiting to figure out what the results are. So we go ahead and add a branch predictor on here. This is a bunch of hardware which learns what we do in our branches so we can predict the right answer. Now we're going really fast, but this L1 cache, it's just not big enough, so it's not holding enough data. So what do we do? We put on another L2 cache over here. Now we've got a really fast processor core, put this all together, copy out a few of them on our chip, and now we've got a multi-core processor. Now let's take a look at how you build a GPU, because it's somewhat different. So here's our GPU pipeline. It's a simple pipeline, and we want to get good performance. So we're not going to try and make this pipeline really fancy, because a GPU is focused on throughput. So instead, we're just going to start copying the pipeline. We're going to put a whole bunch of these together. Here we've got eight pipelines, so we can do eight things at once, so we can get eight times the throughput. We're going to add an instruction cache to this and some sort of local memory. We'll package this up and call it a streaming multiprocessor if we happen to be working at NVIDIA. Put a bunch of these things down on the chip, package this up, and we'll call it a GPU. Now here's sort of CPU versus a GPU. One important thing to notice here is the yellow area in these two figures. The yellow area is the part that's actually doing useful work. All the other stuff around there is just helping it to run efficiently. So you see there's a much higher percentage of the area in the GPU is doing useful work than in the CPU. Okay. So latency versus throughput. Which one of these processors is designed for latency, and which one is designed for throughput? Well, if we take a look at this, the CPU over here is designed for latency. It has a few cores, it's only doing four things at once here, but it's got all this extra stuff around here to make those few things run really quickly. If you look at the GPU, it has lots and lots of processing cores, but they're not really fast, because it doesn't have all this stuff to support them. So here we're going to get good throughput. Lots and lots of things done, but each one's slow. Here we're going to get good latency. 
Only a few things done, but each one is going to run really fast. Let's take a look at this in real life. So here we've got two processors, an Intel CPU and an NVIDIA GPU. And if we zoom in on one of the cores on the Intel CPU, we can see what's going on inside it. So this part over here, this is the pipeline. This is the part that's doing the actual processing. Here's our level one cache, our level two cache, and our branch predictor. And if we draw that back here on the die, you can see these yellow areas, these are the areas that are actually doing useful work on this chip. Everything else in here is just trying to help them run fast. Now let's take a look at the GPU. So here's one of the streaming multiprocessors on the GPU. Inside of it, it's got 192 pipelines and some small caches. So if we go ahead and draw that in here, what you see is that the GPU has a much higher percentage of area that's actually doing useful work. So if you can get a program that's throughput performance that you care about, you can potentially get much better performance on the GPU. But if you care about latency, the fact that you're using all the rest of your chip to make this one little part goes fast means you're going to get really good latency out of this device.